Order. The sitting is resumed. It is time for questions to the Minister of Finance and Personnel, and we will begin with 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Mr. Tom Elliott. Mr. Elliott. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I would uh, like to ask uh, the Minister of Finance and Personnel um, if he has had any recent discussions with the National Assets Management Agency, better known as, as NAMA, and uh, if there are any plans for disposal of assets in Northern Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for his uh, question. I had a very recent discussion with uh, the Chairman of uh, NAMA, along with uh, members of the Northern Ireland Advisory Committee. We met in Parliament Buildings actually last Monday. Uh, it was my first meeting with Mr Daly in my capacity as Finance Minister, and it was a very, very useful meeting um, because of the extent of assets, Mr Deputy Speaker, which um, uh, NAMA have in Northern Ireland, the nominal value of the assets that they have in Northern Ireland is around three and a half billion pounds. They have been, as the member will be aware, selling assets off as they become viable to sell them off. Uh, one of the things that they stressed to me, and obviously we were all very, very concerned at the creation of NAMA. My, my predecessor in, in this post uh, very assiduously worked with his counterpart, the late Brian Lennon, who was Finance Minister in the Irish Republic at that time to ensure that the fears that many of us had that there could be a fire sale of assets in Northern Ireland did not materialise, because obviously we are very concerned about that happening. What NAMA were keen to point out is not only has there not been a fire sale, but through the ability to lend to developers uh, for viable propositions, they have put in some £140 million worth of money into the local economy, and that has seen various developments go forward, um, including a housing development for 90 units in Dundonald, in East Belfast, and some significant commercial property in the centre of Be uh, Belfast as well. Could I just remind uh, Mr Elliott, the Speaker, I think yesterday drew attention to the, the Times uh, overlapping or, or infringing on uh, oral questions that are already down, so we would be listening obviously very carefully to your supplementary, having drawn attention to that. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And, uh, I suppose I, I didn't realise there was an overlap if there was one, but sorry, apologies for that if there was. But does the Minister consider it uh, likely that uh, the Ulster Bank could, could be part of, uh, ex partly exchanged for British loans and investments currently owned by NAMA, and if there were any likely implications for Northern Ireland in that? may well be a, a tad of an overlap in that respect. Um, the, I, I, don't think, I don't think that is a likely... Uh, option, not least because having met with my, my counterpart in the Irish Republic, uh, Michael Noonan, uh, this issue has been raised, and I don't get any sense of longing for a, such a swap as the, the member has described. Obviously, the future of, of Ulster Bank is something that we are very closely monitoring, not least because of its significant size in Northern Ireland. It is our biggest lending. Uh, bank in Northern Ireland, despite its problems, despite the issues that it currently has and is still dealing with, it has a 30 plus percent share of the market in Northern Ireland because it is the only bank that we have that is uh, nationally owned at the UK level. It is frequently, Deputy Speaker, the only one that avails of various national lending initiatives. So Ulster Bank, for all of its travails, for all of the difficulties that it has faced and continues to face, is obviously something that, that we are concerned about its future. We want to see it operating in Northern Ireland as a properly functioning bank. It is, in is incredibly critical to our economy that Ulster Bank does function properly and it is able to get loans out to businesses um, so that they can start to grow and start to employ people in Northern Ireland. I inform members that uh, the member listed uh, for question number four has withdrawn her name within the appropriate time frame. And I call Mr. Kaho Ohoshin. Uh, the brief last can cure that. Could I ask the Minister, uh, I know that it is agreed on the possibilities of the devolving of DVA functions uh, to the Executive in conjunction with the uh, Minister for the Environment, and I know that he recognises the importance of 300 jobs plus the attendant jobs in Korean. Could I ask him what he has done to advance this issue, uh, uh, more than just lobbying uh, London Ministers? Wait. At the, the outset, I just want to clarify that um, Vehicle licensing and registration is a reserved matter, and it's not devolved to the Assembly, as we know. Um, to date, I have had no discussions with the, the Minister, um, although it has been an issue that has been discussed um, at executive level. Um, I know that the, the 
Minister of the Environment has followed on from his predecessor in that post and trying to lobby for and argue the, 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 the argument that what the 300 plus staff in Coleraine do is a vital part of the entire DVA operation for the, the whole of the United Kingdom and whatever happens with uh, a move towards more online processing or online, online processing of car tax, um, that there is still a role for those staff in Coleraine to play. For a supplementary. Um, could I ask the Minister, will he assure the House that he will perhaps uh, take a look at uh, consulting with uh, the unions there, the workforce, and indeed perhaps with uh, Corey and Borough Council? Well, I, I, Mr Deputy Speaker, I am content that the, the Minister of the Environment, who has obviously greater policy oversight in this area than I do, it doesn't mean, just because I do not have uh, direct responsibility does not mean that I can share his concerns, the members' concerns, or indeed any uh, representative from that area, or indeed right across Northern Ireland, for the future of that function that is performed at uh, Coleraine. I do think, though, as an issue in terms of taking it forward, the Minister of the Environment is better placed to do that. He has, as I know, um, um, set up meetings with the relevant transport minister, which I think is Mr Stephen Hammond, um, uh, to deal with this issue. I think it is an issue that is better pursued on a one-to-one -one level by him, but obviously with the support of myself uh, and other executive colleagues. Thank you. I call Mr Lord. I call Lord Morrow. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the Minister to outline the issues discussed at the first meeting of the Joint Ministerial Banking uh, Task Force on Banking, please? I thank uh, Deputy Speaker the Member for, for raising this issue. It is a very, very important issue and follows on from some of the points that Mr, Mr. Elliott raised. We, uh, myself, uh, and Arlene Foster, the Minister for Enterprise, represent Northern Ireland on the Joint Ministerial Task Force, which was created uh, out of the Economic Pact agreed by the Prime Minister and the First and Deputy First Minister back in, in June. Uh, and I think it is one of the most significant aspects of that pact because, uh, as we all know, and the member will know from his own constituency experience, the inability of good businesses to get the finance that they need to grow is inhibiting our ability to recover uh, as an economy. So the fact that that task force has been created is a, an acceptance and an acknowledgement at a national government level that there is a particular problem here in Northern Ireland, which is often very distinct from banking issues which affect um, Great Britain. Um, at that meeting that we had, we had a, uh, a broad-ranging discussion on about six issues. Uh, we discussed the strategic importance of making progress on access to finance to economic recovery in Northern Ireland. We discussed the very different structure of banking that we have in Northern Ireland, where there is less penetration by the, the big five banks, as they would describe them in Great Britain. We talked about legacy issues, primarily the property overhang that many businesses here in Northern Ireland experience. Uh, we also talked about the issue that Mr. Uh, Elliot Reyes, which is the future of Ulster Bank, and particularly in the context of the Parliamentary Commission on Banking Standards. Uh, we looked at uh, national lending initiatives and their operation in Northern Ireland. And finally, we discussed um, how we could improve the data sets that we, as an executive, receive to inform us better about what lending is going on out there in the uh, community. And I call Mr. Lord Morrow. Uh, well, can I thank the Minister for his fairly comprehensive and, and detailed reply? Uh, can I ask the Minister further, how can national lending uh, initiatives become more effective here in Northern Ireland? Yeah, that was one of the, the key issues that we did discuss and discussed at length at the, the first meeting of the, the task force. Um, and it was, it was raised specifically because myself and my colleague Arlene Foster have been concerned for some time that national lend, lending initiatives, which have been rolled out to much fanfare um, in Great Britain for the whole of the United Kingdom, haven't operated properly or at all, in fact, here in Northern Ireland. Uh, and I think there are, there are two principal reasons for that. One is the different banking structure that we have. So whenever they are unveiling these sorts of initiatives in Great Britain and enforcing them on the big five banks. Only one of those big five banks, um, Ulster Bank, through its uh, ownership by RBS, is operating in Northern Ireland. And many, uh, the second reason is many of those um, solutions aren't tailored to the Northern Ireland problem, which is very much that issue of having a, a property overhang. So, you know, it is not so much an issue of price, which is where many of the initiatives at a national level have been focused on, about reducing the price of lending. It has been about the availability uh, of lending here in Northern Ireland and, and the issue of risk inherent within that. I was very encouraged by the discussion that we did have because we looked at um, how we might be able to tailor 
some of those initiatives for Northern Ireland. Some of the, the thresholds and entry levels have been far, far too high for the economy that we have in Northern Ireland, where most of our businesses are obviously, as we know, uh, small to medium sized. So the, the very high thresholds have been putting off banks getting involved in, in, in schemes um, such as funding for lending, such as enterprise finance guarantee scheme. It is our belief as an executive that those schemes can be tailored for the Northern Ireland environment. Um, we have received a very positive response by Treasury and the Business Department that there may be scope for tailoring some of those funds and channeling through existing funds like the Growth Loan Fund administered by Invest Northern Ireland so that we can get that funding into the economy here in Northern Ireland and out to businesses who so badly need it. Thank you. Mr Stephen Moutry. Uh, thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to update us on the operation of the Help to Buy scheme in Northern Ireland? Well, the Help to Buy scheme is another one of these sort of national uh, initiatives to, in this case, to try to get the mortgage market going. Um, the Help to Buy Mortgage Guarantee Scheme is now available right across the United Kingdom and has been taken up by quite a few of the, the big high street uh, banks, the, um, the likes of RBS, uh, although not the Ulster Bank, although I understand they are considering it, uh, and Lloyds have availed of it, uh, Halifax as well, who obviously lend, lend in Northern Ireland, and, and recently in the last week, Barclays Bank have also joined the scheme. Uh, I think I, I saw a report yesterday that I think only the nationwide are the only big mortgage lender um, in, the, in, in Great Britain who are not now part of the Help to Buy Mortgage Guarantee Scheme. Um, the, it is a, an attractive scheme in that the government will guarantee up to 15 per cent of um, a property, meaning that only 5 per cent of a, mor a mortgage uh, deposit is required from those who might want to get onto the, the property ladder. Um, I think this scheme, on top of our very highly successful and now exceptionally well-funded co-ownership scheme, I think does have potential to assist in the recovery of the housing market in Northern Ireland. Um, and whilst there has been some criticism of the scheme, at a national level because of the fear that it might overheat the housing market in London and the South East. I think most of us here would accept we would, we, would, we would take any sort of heat in our housing market in certain parts of Northern Ireland. Mr Moudry for supplementary. Uh, thank you and I thank the Minister for the response and can I further ask the Minister, will he work with both DSD and the banks to encourage participation in the scheme? Uh, absolutely. Um, we, um, <coughs> myself and uh, my a colleague in DSD, the, uh, Mr Nelson McCausland, are planning in the not too distant future to meet with local banks to discuss how Help to Buy in concert with the likes of the co-ownership scheme might be able to offer some assistance to the housing market and the recovery of the housing market in Northern Ireland. I think it's important that he and I meet with them to show our support as a government for the scheme. Um, to ask them, uh, in, in, in some ways, allied to the question Lord Morrow asked, how, if there are particular reasons why they are not getting involved in Northern Ireland, um, we could iron those problems out um, with the uh, government in Westminster through the Joint Ministerial Task Force. Because I think it is, it is important, just in the way it has been with, say, the Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme for Business, if there is a scheme which has the potential to help um, people in Northern Ireland get onto the property market and start to get the housing market moving, it would be a shame if that scheme, which is operating and functioning already in mainland Great Britain, isn't operating in Northern Ireland because local banks aren't joining it. So if there's anything that I can do, if there's anything that Nelson McCausland do, can do, if there's anything that this executive can do to encourage local banks to get involved in this, or even to use it as an opportunity to highlight the products that they already have, which are encouraging people to get onto the property ladder, well, I think that's a, a useful use of our time. I call Ms Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister how the Agri-Food Loan Scheme will work? Well, the, um, the scheme that the, the member refers to is a scheme that was launched um, just at the start of this month by myself and the Enterprise Minister, which is seeking to avail of a major opportunity that we believe is there for uh, local food processors and local food producers. The um, horse meat scandal that we were all only too familiar with um, in recent times has seen large supermarkets want to go back to sourcing their uh, meat products from, from the UK. And obviously that then there is a there is a gap in the market potentially there for suppliers to get into. 
So, Deputy Speaker, we, we, we identifying that in, con in conjunction with the industry itself, um, identified that as, a, as a, an area of opportunity. But the problem was that, that farmers who wanted to build more chicken houses or um, accommodation for pigs and, pol and poultry and so forth didn't have the ability to access the finance that they required and were being asked to do so at very, very high levels of security. So, the scheme that we have brought forward, which is in conjunction with banks to the extent where People will only have to operate one application form um, when they go in. There won't be multiple application forms, one for government and one for the banks. Um, that we will work with those banks then to, to lend money on commercial t terms at a, uh, with the government uh, money being subordinated to the bank's money, but with also significantly with lower security. So it allows those farmers then to seize the opportunity, and it's being ruled out initially in the poultry sector. And we have um, committed £10 million in the first phase with a commitment to give more money to the scheme as it uh, develops. And that's the end of, of uh, the period for topical questions, so we must now move on to those.